Hello everyone, let's review about the upper GI bleeding versus lower GI bleeding. So, history of the patient and exam. Let's examine history taking of the patient. So, in the case of upper GI bleeding, the patient has hemaptomasis, they will uh, vomit a blood, coffee ground emesis. Blood will be like coffee ground. In case of upper GI bleed, melina will be greater than hematochesia. The patient will be hypovolemic, tachycardia, lightheadedness, and he will be hypertensive. BP will be low, having a tachycardia, feeling of light headedness. So, in the case of lower uh, GI bleed, hematochesia will be greater than melina. It can be either so what are the diagnosis so how can we diagnose the patient who is having upper GI bleed we have to do NG tube and lavage if patient is stable we have to do endoscopy but in the case of lower GI bleed always rule out upper GI bleed first with NG lavage if brisk Anoscopy and sigmoidoscopy for patient who is less than 45 years of age with small volume of bleeding. We have to do anoscopy and sigmoidoscopy in the case of patient who has small volume bleeding and uh, their age are less than 45 years. So clonoscopy if the patient is stable. arteriography or exploratory laparotomy if patient is unstable so we have to diagnose the patient via colonoscopy in the case of uh, um, lower GI bleed but in the case of upper GI bleed we have to uh, do endoscopy if patient is stable stable endoscopy stable colonoscopy what are the causes who cause upper GI bleed of course peptic ulcer disease esophagitis gastritis malaria based tear esophageal viruses lead to upper GI bleed so what are the, the things which uh, anatomically which are upper GI which is stomach and esophagus so always think about Peptic, peptic ulcer disease, esophagitis, male revis, esophageal viruses. But in the case of lower GI bleed, always remember very high yield for the exam. Diverticulosis, the 60% cause of uh, lower GI bleeding is diverticulosis. Angiodysplasia also be there. Inflammatory bowel disease, hemophile, fissures neoplasm, arteriovenous malformation. So, what are the initial management of upper GI bleed? Initial management of upper GI bleed will be protect the airway. First, intubate, intubate the patient. Intubation may be needed. Stabilize the patient with IV fluids, packed RBCs. So, if patient uh, is in early like in early in acute blood loss so hematocrit will be normal or maybe normal early in acute blood loss so the treatment of initial management are the same in the case of uh, upper GI bleed and also in the case of lower GI bleed management is same but for the long term treatment we have to do endoscopy in the followed by therapy directed at underlying cause or lower GI bleed depend on the underlying etiology same endoscopy therapy we have to inject epinephrine intra arterial vasopressin to which lead to decrease uh, in the bleeding Actually, these are uh, symp sympathomimetic, so they will lead to vasoconstriction, embolization, 
will also be there and we have to do surgery in the case of diverticular disease or angiodysplasia or angiodysplasia we have to do surgery so thanks for watching please subscribe bye